you like pizza? Do you like learning about the intricate and painstaking daily lives of your average pizza chef? Do you like going at incredibly high speeds only to realize you are headed straight into a portal made of pizza and have sealed your inevitable fate? Do you like a video game that immerses you with hectic gameplay that makes it feel like you're actually in the main character's shoes, which is having a full-on anxiety attack? Well, have I got a game for you. Pizza Tower is an indie 2D platformer released January 2023 on Steam, developed by Tour de Pizza, after a pretty long time in the oven. I actually originally covered it back in my original Itch.io video back in 2020. Hey guys, subscribe for more Pizza Tower content. Uh, I hope you're still here. A few years later. I really like the never, right? And it had a pretty slow and steady development, albeit with a bit of radio silence through 2021 and into most of 2022. The game's come a long way since back in that original video, evolving into a beast far larger than its original scope, and it's time I take a look at it again, now that it's out in its final form. I'd say I'm going to review it today, but it's the middle of the night, and this is going to be more just gushing about how freaking amazing this game is, oh my god! Pizza Tower takes heavy inspiration from games like Wario Land and Sonic the Hedgehog, kind of combining them into this weird love child. You play as Peppino, a pizza chef who's down on his luck and pushed to his goddamn wit's end. You ask to save his precious pizzeria from Pizza Face, who's, well, a, a pizza, pizza face. What you want. Who wants to destroy the pizzeria with a giant laser from the top of the pizza tower nearby. Peppino heads to the pizza tower to stop him, only to end up locked inside, leaving you to have to fight, scratch, run, and claw your way through multiple floors of the tower, as well as the levels and bosses within them to save the day and escape. Each world is broken down to a handful of levels to explore loosely themed around the floor it's on with you needing to save Toppins in each level to get enough money to unlock the boss for that floor. Toppins are your MacGuffin for this game. They're trapped in levels in crates, with five in each level to get, each awarding you $10 towards getting to the boss and the next floor after that. Gameplay is super satisfying, with Pepino being a treat to move once you get the hang of the controls, with him gaining speed as you run, along with multiple attacks to start chaining a combo to help increase your score for the level. Pepino also gets different skills depending on what speed you're going at. He could charge jump out of a stage 2 dash, for example, by holding up. If you're having trouble with this, remember that you don't need to be holding which direction Pepino's going in once you're in a dash. It threw me off for a while there, so I thought it would be worth mentioning. Though it is a bit frustrating to nail down in the tighter spaces. He also has an air dash, can turn on a dime even at high speeds, has a ground pound, and can dive at a 45 degree angle to help maintain momentum while running around. Pepino also has a role to get into tight spaces while breaking objects or crawl at a low speed where needed. At higher speeds, Pepino can slam through some walls and metal boxes that he can't when trying to get through at a low speed or a standstill. But the game generally does a pretty good job of making sure that in these situations, it's not too hard to get back up to speed again if you're not already there by the time you hit one of these areas where you need to get through to progress. He can also do a taunt that doubles as a parry to avoid most attacks, which can be turned into a super taunt which can immediately kill every enemy on screen with an up combo. And if you hold it, he starts doing a cool breakdance. Levels are a blast, with fun enemies to kill and secrets to discover and all sorts of nooks and crannies. You might need a guide to find a few of them, because they can be a bit out of the way admittedly, but finding one you haven't seen before is super satisfying and actually promotes replaying these levels over and over again. Almost every level in the game is built to ramp Pepino's movement, leading to these super satisfying stretches when you get really comfortable with the game where you start just flying through areas and doing some real crazy stuff. And it all culminates at the end of every level where you destroy this big ol' head, leading to a countdown starting, giving you a couple minutes before the pizza face arrives and instantly kills you, being the only way you can die in a normal level. It is so thrilling to go flying through a level backwards after getting to the end, knowing at this point what tricks the level had to offer, with it giving you all the time and space you really need to get comfortable with the level's gimmick, only to now throw it back at you in a different way, with a time constraint. There's honestly no feeling that quite describes rushing back through a level and just scraping your way out with the increasing panic that you're only seconds away from being a pizza snack. This is Pizza Tower at its strongest, just hectic crazy platforming, flying all over the place while racking up a giant combo with amazing music playing in the background, accenting that urgency of the situation you're in. You're in imminent danger, you're going to die if you don't get out of there. And the game does such an amazing job of really playing on that and creating an exhilarating rush unlike anything else I've ever really played. And if you really want a style and profile, after completing a level for the first time, or any time if you happen to get through the tutorial fast enough to unlock them all early, you can go through for a second lap. This is a terrible idea. Awful. But you do get one hell of a score bonus for pulling it off, and the adrenaline seeing that timer hit those last 10 seconds can't be understated. And the absolute dread of flying past the exit gate like a dumbass, only to get the suck from the... Get the suck from an extra cheesy matzo peasy into lap two with ten seconds on the clock can't be understated either. Not 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 that I know. 
Uh, not, not at all. On top of it, as you go through the game, you'll have situations where Peppino will end up transforming in some way a la Wario Land. He can get stuck in barrels and go rolling, or get turned into a flying pizza box, or ride on a sausage, or become a knight who slides along floors, or ride a corpse, oh my god, that's horrifying. Each has its own situational uses for the levels they appear in, generally to get to other areas. And they're mostly used quite well here in combination with the gimmicks a handful of levels have. For example, in Fast Food Saloon, you end up racing horses to get to the Toppins, and you can do so while riding a giant sausage. Or there's an entire level where you end up playing mini golf with this asshole of a golf ball who keeps walking away from the hole. After you've collected enough Toppins and the money they bring with them, you can unlock a boss gate from buying it from Mr. Stick, this money-grubbing ass, which you'll have to beat to get to the next floor of the tower, ranging from Pepperman, who's what I think of when I imagine what an apple looks like, thanks game for breaking me, to the embodiment of a cheesy western, to the noise, an off-brand cousin of the Noid, to Peppino's most sworn rival of all, Peppino himself. These bosses can be tough as nails the first time doing them, but it is so satisfying to keep going back to them and getting better and better. Pepperman in particular is a fantastic first boss because he just has that right amount of random crap going on to show you that these fights will be a bit more complicated than just hit the dude a bunch, while also being a bit more forgiving than the other bosses, and he is so satisfying to keep fighting repeatedly. He was the first boss I got a perfect on, and I had a blast doing so and learning his patterns so well I could dodge his every move. The feeling of wanting to grow continues with all the bosses too, and while that wanting to grow and keep getting better while progressing through the tower has one hell of a payoff. But in this case, I think I'm going to leave spoilers for you to seek out if you want them ahead of playing. Just know that it, it actually pains me something fierce to not be gushing about the finale right now, because it actually blew me away. And I want to blow you away too. Those of you who've played the game, you, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm sure we can all agree that there's some special hype in there waiting for anyone that hasn't played yet. As you make your way up the tower, the game does a great job aesthetically evolving, becoming more and more eerie and beat up. After floor 3, you're no longer in comfortable territory, and by floor 5, the final floor, the game starts to lean full on into horror. Hell, it'll lean right into it if you sit on the title screen long enough with the lights off. It does so much utilizing its art style, managing to be a perfect mix of charming and creepy, with art that probably should be objectively probably be considered bad, but it's so charming and lovable and fun that I just I can't help loving it to death. It's kind of like Ren and Stimpy kinds of creepy here, but there's nothing that looks exactly like Pizza Tower, or plays like Pizza Tower, or sounds like Pizza Tower, and all of it's wrapped up in this neat little bow with a killer soundtrack that just blows me away with its quality and how fantastic it is across the board. This game can make you feel dread or excitement or pure adrenaline, and it's just so refreshing seeing a game where every little detail plays a part in the experience. No effort is wasted here, no stone goes unturned in the quest for making the best experience for the player. The attention to detail here is totally next level, even in the smallest things like in this level with the taxis having the cab driver change to pizza face during the escape segment, or in the segment with Gustavo the driver changes to the rat, or pizza face looking sad if you manage to escape during showtime. It all matters and it all comes together to create something truly incredible. They even have the pizza song, yeah this is amazing! Even other things, like how previous bosses will show up in later floors and will react to you approaching. Or how on the first and second floor you see Gustavo, one of your allies through the game, fighting this giant rat, only to on floor 3 see them having reconciled, with floor 3 also being the first time in the game you play as Gustavo and the rat for a segment where they work as a team. Hell, Gustavo even gets an entirely different moveset from Peppino, which is a bit slower while still being incredibly fun in its own right. Or how the granny pizzas who appear on floors sound like they're speaking gibberish at times, and sometimes they are, but are really foreshadowing events of other points of the game. Or how all the floors all feature the same blocks that would block your path during pizza time in a regular stage that end up forcing you to change your plans within those levels, and the game goes out of its way to make sure that you know that they are there on each floor, by having them near the door entrances or levels. During pizza time, Gustavo and Mr. Stick will appear to point you towards the exit so you don't get lost, both wanting to help you for their own reasons. But the game will also make sure that in situations where you're playing as Gustavo, only Mr. Stick is helping you escape. It all comes together into an incredible experience. And once you've completed it for the first time, there's countless things to do in order to keep bringing you back. All the secrets that haven't been explored left to explore, bonuses for completing areas fast enough, or the whole game even, with rewards for clearing the game in under two hours encouraging people to attempt to speedrun it scores to achieve, levels to get a perfect rank in by never dropping combo, bosses to master and bend to your pizza grease soaked whims, achievements to collect that range from simple to 
totally actually insane. Setting your own challenges like other players are with attempting to clear every boss in a marathon without getting hit once, getting your clear percent up higher and higher, and having to restart your 100% save run because you accidentally killed Snotty like the monster you are. Stop staring at me. It was an accident. I swear I didn't mean to kill him. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't. I didn't mean to do it. It wasn't my. All in all, Pizza Tower is clearly inspired. The speed of Sonic, the collection and frantic playstyle of Wario Land, style from Ren and Stimpy and other 90s cartoons, a sprinkling of modern animation and games thrown in here and there. But in the process, it becomes its own thing. It's evolved way past being a love letter to these games and series. Pizza Tower is a unique beast all of its own, with unique gameplay unlike anything else out there. A charming art style, infinite replayability, fun and memorable characters, a satisfying mix of fast paced and tight 2D platforming, and man, it was worth every second of waiting for. And I would not have felt right not doing a video to tell you to go buy this game. I've heard it runs great on the Steam Deck too, if that's your jam. I've seen other people say it and it bears repeating. It isn't hyperbole to say this might be a contender for 2023's game of the year. And in my case, I'm sure it's going to be in the contention for it. And I'm sure if you check this out, it'll be the same for you too. Links will be in the description. It may have taken five years for the pizza to arrive, but I think it's the best damn pizza I've ever had. Speaking of pizza, talking all night about pizza towers really rustled me up a pretty hefty appetite. So I'm gonna go grab a quick bite. Huh, what do you know? Looks like this Peppino guy actually makes a pretty mean pizza after all. Well, dear viewer, until next time. Thank you. Wow, that's pretty good.